Hey everybody. So, <laughs> so uh, today we're gonna learn all about the new Babylock Solaris. <laughs> and I want to start before I get into uh, touching the, the screen and everything. I want to just start on kind of the outside of the machine, the changes that we have. Um, <clears throat> for, uh, for one thing, and this is something that if you saw my video, I didn't realize when I was making that video. I wish that I did because I think it's really cool. But the embroidery unit on this machine, there's no hole in the top of it at all. There's no slit running down the whole thing. Whereas on every embroidery machine that I've ever seen, there's always a rail in here and there has to be an opening that allows this piece here to travel across the top of the machine. Uh, and on this machine, instead of having that rail up here, it's down on the inside. Uh, and so you can actually use this as a, as a surface to put things down on and not have things fall into that hole. We actually had that problem at Embroidery Camp this year because we were doing things with pins and you know you got a pin in your hand and you got to put it down. And you might put it down here and then you might knock it into the embroidery unit, <laughs> which is a thing that happened. So uh, that can't happen. I really, really like that. Um, now, if you watched my video, then you know that there's a new surface on the bed of this machine. And it's both the embroidery unit and on the bed of the machine, where they have made the, the plastic more of a dull finish instead of being so shiny. So it both doesn't reflect light as much, and it also doesn't get scratched the way that the really shiny finish does. So your bed of your machine is going to stay looking nice uh, for a lot longer. Um, so I really like that, uh, especially because when we service machines, a lot of times we clean them and then they get more scratched up looking because we, we clean it and <laughs> that really brings out the, uh, the scratches. Um, so, so that's cool. Another thing about the bed of this machine is this needle plate is different. Um, if you saw my video, you know that, that instead of having a two-part needle plate where half of it is plastic and half of it is metal, it is a one-piece needle plate. Look at that, the way that comes out, just like that. Okay, I really, really like that. They also have made it so that the bobbin case in here, you can see uh, where it's positioned. See how this doesn't move around at all? I mean, it, it wiggles a little tiny bit, it's supposed to. Uh, but the advantage there is on the previous generation machines, your bobbin case could spin around when the plate was not on it. And that was a big problem where people would take the plate off and not take the bobbin case out. And it was a whole thing that caused a lot of problems. I actually made a YouTube video specifically on how to recover from if you put your stuff back together the wrong way. So we don't have to worry about that anymore. But even though this goes on here differently, the rest of the experience is the same. So it's still a, uh, quick set drop in bobbin. If we take our bobbin, we just drop it in from the top, bring it around the guide. The only difference is the guide that you bring it around is metal now instead of plastic. So that's cool too. I like that. I mean, I've never had a problem with them breaking, but you know, if you want to add metal to a machine, I am in favor of that. And that just attaches the same way, the, the bobbin cover. Uh, so that's really, really awesome. The machine does come with a single hole needle plate uh, as well. So that switches in and out just the same way that the, uh, that the zigzag plate does. So another thing that is different is the way this lid works. I have always been a fan of the way baby lock machines look with the lid closed. I think it looks a lot prettier, but in order to use things like your vertical spool pin or the 10 thread stand, you've always had to take this off of here. So most people's machines that I see, you don't get to see that beautiful image of the lid on the machine because they take it off and just don't put it back on. It gets taken off and put in a closet or something so that you can put your, your vertical thread stands on there. But on this machine, you don't have to do that. This lid flips all the way back so that you can put this on it. Now what's this? This is the case that holds your vertical thread stand. So I have always been nervous when I saw people with their bags with this in it, okay? Because there's no protection for this. The, the pins, this is the Destiny and Alissimo vertical thread stand, by the way. This is the exact one that's for those two machines. So this extends up, but these don't fold down. If you want to, you can reach under here and push in a little button and pull these out. But it's, it's a fragile little plastic button. I, they can break pretty easily. So most people just leave these in their bag like that. And it just seems kind of like a bad idea. So this has these handy little clips. And this comes out. This part flips up. And your spool pins flip up like that. It's got the little cushions already attached. 
And then this piece flips up and around, comes up like that. On the bottom, see these little round parts? Those are magnets. And they attach right there, just like that. Super easy to take that on and off. Uh, I, I, I really like the, the way that that works. So uh, that's our new vertical thread stand. Um, and, uh, and it should be real easy to take that and slip it into a pocket on, uh, on, the, uh, on the trolley bag, which it is coming with the trolley bag, the, uh, the purple bag that we have up at the front. I know it's hard to get it on the camera here. I'll just move that. So this is the bag. Okay, so we've got the, the bag for our embroidery unit and the machine itself fits in there. And they've designed this so that you can fit it through doors. Right, how novel. You can fit your embroidery machine through a door. You don't have to take the hinges off. It's really nice. So it fits in from the top. Um, the, uh, the wheels are swivel on the front and stationary in the back. So it's very maneuverable, very easy to get your machine around. Um, and you don't have to uh, lay the, the bag on the floor on its back and then be a weightlifter and force the machine down into it, if you know what I'm talking about. If you have the original Destiny case, you do. Uh, <laughs> um, so, so that's cool. Uh, and uh, this on top here is uh, the pallet software. This is also coming with the machine right now. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a little while. Um, so let's start playing with the machine a little bit. Um, this is our big hoop. Okay, this is really big. This is 10 and 5 eighths inches wide by 16 inches tall. Oh, heh. <laughs> <laughs> Not that you guys can't see it, it's so big. Uh, so the, the, besides the fact that this is enormous, there's another, uh, there's another change to this. And that is at the end here, this is a little latch that you flip from one side to the other. Instead of having to use a screwdriver and tighten the screw, we just flip this open and we can take our, our inner ring out push it down and flip this back in. So you just set this to the right tension with the screw and then you don't have to keep messing with it. Um, that is really, really awesome. And I also really like that they made this out of metal. The entire thing is metal. So this top part here, I don't know if you can see that good. This is metal. And then on the underside too, you can see that that is a metal bolt that's going all the way through. Uh, I like it. I like it a lot. Certain other brands, oh, <laughs> sorry. Well, just trust me, it's metal. <laughs> <laughs> They're not. It's just the biggest hoop that's like this. Um, so I don't know whether you know eventually uh, in in the future they'll they'll have you know ones that aren't uh, you know the smaller ones like that. But where it's really really helpful is with this one because it's so big. It's really difficult to get everything set in there and then use the screw. I had difficulty with the Destiny large hoop, and that's not even as big as this one is. Um, so I really like that they gave us that. All right, so. I'm going to sit down here and we're going to do uh, a, little bit of, um, a little bit of fun stuff. So if you've watched the videos, you probably know, uh, sorry, <laughs> you probably know what the main attraction is uh, on this machine. And that's that we have this awesome projector uh, that we can use to project our embroidery designs directly on the fabric. But if you haven't seen it live in person, we're going to do that now because it is really, really cool. Um, I'm just going to bring in one that I have all set here. It's, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a rhinoceros beetle. It's my favorite design to do this with. All right, check this out. Can you zoom in there? How's that look? Yeah. <laughs> it's like magic. So that's exactly where my design's going to go, and it's exactly what it's going to do. It is a full color laser projector. And you can project exactly on your fabric where your design is going to go. So imagine you're trying to, to place something uh, on a sleeve or on uh, the, the lapel of a, of a shirt or something. You want to put monograms on, on something like that. You can project exactly where that is going to go and what it's going to look like in context on the item. Um, that is really, really awesome. And we're going to do a little project in a little while here. Um, well, I'm going to, and you're going to watch. Uh, and we're gonna, we're gonna use we're gonna use the projector to do that. But I mean, you can see all the different applications you can have of this. Um, you can move the design. So I'm right now I'm moving the design with the arrow keys on the uh, on the on the screen, and see how it's only showing me the top of the beetle right now. I can move in real time the part of the fabric that the projector is looking at, and now I can see where my design is. So if I've got a design that's too big for the projector to display all of, you can move it around to see 
exactly uh, where all the different edges of the design uh, are going to be. So that's nifty. Um, all right, I'm going to turn off the projector now. So that's kind of like my <laughs> my favorite thing is that it can project the, the designs on there, but this does a whole lot more uh, than just that. Um, I'm going to go in and show a little bit of the IQ Designer stuff that's new. Is there anybody here that doesn't know what I mean when I say the words IQ Designer? Okay, so the IQ Designer, in brief, is uh, a, a digitizing program that's built into this machine. And it was built into the previous machine too, the Destiny 2. Uh, and um, this does a lot of stuff that that one didn't do. So we're going to go in and play with the IQ. Um, the, the buttons do kind of the same thing, so it's a really easy transition to learn uh, how, to, how to operate the new stuff in here. They just kind of streamlined a lot of things and made it, uh, made it a little easier to do stuff. So I'm going to go in and bring just a, um, let's see, we'll do a 6x6 six six square, just so I have something to fill in. We have, in the past, we had the ability to bring in some decorative fill patterns that are you know, useful to, to create like a quilting look or just like a decorative filled in uh, space uh, on, on your machine. Uh, and we had, if you had an upgraded Destiny 2, then what you had is 15 of these decorative fill patterns. And we now have 30 of these decorative fill patterns. Okay, so a whole, we doubled the amount of decorative fills that we had. And we also have some really excellent options for ways to manipulate and change these. So if I go in and I pick one of these, uh, one of these designs, I'm just gonna go ahead and fill my little space with it. And if I hit next here, it takes me into the uh, kind of the properties of the design. And what they've done is they've changed it so that on this menu, when you're changing your properties, your changes happen right away. You don't have to go into another, another screen to see what you've done. So I really like that. Um, we have uh, still the option to take a design and change the scale of it, um, rotate it. You can now add uh, an element of randomness to a design, which I'm going to show you uh, in a minute. Uh, but one of my favorite features is the ability to change where you're looking at in the design. So this is a repeating pattern. Okay, If I did this in a larger block, you'd see the pattern start to repeat. Uh, but I can tell it to go and change where it's focusing on that pattern. And you can do some really, really interesting things with this. I've got a cool sample that I'm going to show you. But right on the screen, I'm going to show you something that I figured out while I was playing with it in, uh, in St. Louis. If you change your, your position on any of these repeating patterns, by two inches on uh, both of these options here. What this is doing is, is moving kind of where the center of the design is. All right, so watch this. I'm gonna hit OK and watch what it does. Look at that, totally different pattern. Isn't that cool? So here, I'm gonna undo that, which by the way, we have undo and redo buttons now in all screens. Okay, so in embroidery mode, you have, undo, you have an undo button too. Totally awesome, we'll get to that. So that's the original pattern. And that's the change that I made to it just by moving uh, the position of, of the design. And it looks like a completely different pattern. I love that. Uh, so that's something that I hadn't figured out when I made the original video. I, cause <laughs> I really wish that I had. You need part two. Part two, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a part two. I'm kind of doing it now, really. Um, so, so that's neat. We can also go and add what they call random shift to a pattern. Okay. So I'm going to go and change my decorative fill that I have chosen. I can do that right from the screen. I don't have to go back to the main IQ page. I can go in and just change what my fill is. Say so I'm going to do this little thatched pattern here. All right. So here we've got this. And I can, like I said, I can change the scale of it. So I'm going to go and make this a little bit bigger. All right. And now I'm going to go ahead and add my random shift. Watch this. Isn't that neat? I really, really like that. Okay, so that's that's something that's that's totally new. We weren't able to do anything like that before. So you can see how we've got these thirty decorative patterns, but we can change them in all these ways to end up with more than just those thirty patterns. We we have essentially, you know, thousands and thousands of different types of combinations we can make with with these thirty patterns. Um, so I'm going to take this and uh, let's see. I'm going to. I'm going to use this for later in my demonstration here. So I'm going to save this onto my machine for later. 
But there's some other stuff that I want to show you before I, before I get out of the IQ. For instance, um, how many of you guys with Destinies have scanned in images and turned them into embroidery designs? Yeah, but a lot of you, that's good. Um, so one of the things that always kind of drove me nuts about that is how long it took to scan in your image. Now they did make it faster to scan in your image on this. Okay, so we can scan in a picture and it does take less time uh, to do that. But crucially, at least for me, <laughs> one thing that I really, really love is they have made it much better at scanning, well not scanning, but importing a picture off of a USB drive, like something that you would download off the internet, say, instead of having uh, a, a design that you drew by hand or that you printed out a copy of that you downloaded off the internet, I can take images that I download off the internet and digitize them much better and faster than the, uh, than the Destiny could do. So if you've ever tried to do this, you may have come across a error message that says the data is too complex. Um, that has happened to me a lot. Uh, and one of, the image that that, one of the images that that happened to me on was on this one. I'm just going to load it off of my USB drive. It's a big image, so it takes it a minute to load. So this is one that I tried to do, uh, and it wouldn't do it. It said that the data was too complex. Right? So I'm just going to run this in at all the default settings. I'm not going to change anything about it. I'm just going to hit OK. I'm going to hit Set, and it's thinking about it. Uh, it's brought it in. It's traced it. And here's the part where it would tell me that the data is too complex if it was, in fact, too complex. And instead, it just digitizes it, no problem pretty much instantly. Um, so that's pretty cool <laughs> that it can do that. And I can, of course, change the stitch type. That's a satin stitch. But now we've got it as a run stitch, and voila, that is, that is pretty awesome. Not only that, but it can also do a really, really good job of a full color picture. And again, I can do this off of scanning it or just loading it off of the, uh, off of the USB drive. But I just went on the internet and downloaded a couple of kind of random things that I like. So here we've got the, uh, the Pikachu, the Pokemon, right? So here he is. We're going to go in and let the machine digitize him. Now, the, from, for a full color picture, it's not going to be able to do a photograph uh, or like a realistic painting or anything like that. Uh, any type of clip art, though, that you have that's like this, that's like a, um, uh, yeah, like that's, it's like a vector type image or uh, that's like a, a little cartoon character type thing. It's really, really good at this. Um, I was blown away by how well it actually manages to turn this into stitches. Just as good as, as real digitizing software that you'd have on a computer would be uh, at, at turning something into stitches. Um, so we're going to go ahead and set this and preview what this is going to look like if it were to sew out. Um, and it's taking its time, but it's doing it. There we go. Look at that. That's pretty awesome. So if I wanted to take this and sew it out, I could just bring it in and hit memory, and now it is on my machine. So I can just go anytime I want now. I can just bring up my, my Pikachu design that I saved, and there it will be. I really, really like that. So um, the, the Destiny could resolve this one, but it didn't get nearly as much detail out of it. I was comparing and contrasting um, when, the first day I got this. Yeah? My, my question is always, can you go back and modify that? Um, once I have set it and saved it as an embroidery design, no. But as long as I haven't left the IQ designer, yes, I can. I can see what it looks like, see if there's changes that need to be made to it, and go back into the IQ and change it. Um, so, so yes, you can. Once I've, once I've done this, if I didn't save the IQ designer file, which I didn't do, then I can't. But as long as I've saved the IQ designer file, you can go back and edit it all you like. So there's kind of two different ways you can save. You can save it as a stitch file. You can save it as a file that the machine can continue working with. Um, now, so I said that you can't do photos with this, but with the palette software that is coming with it, you can. We're going to do some photos. I got some um, humorous photos for us to, to do later, and that's going to be fun. <laughs> so that's part of my plan. Um, so some other new stuff that we have with the IQ, though, is in the original IQ, we had the ability to apply a few different types of like decorative stitches 
to our designs. So we were able to put in, uh, let's see, there was a running stitch, a bean stitch, which is a triple run, a satin stitch. Um, there's a chain stitch, a candle wick, and that's it. That's what we could do on the original Destiny. Now we have a bunch that we can choose from. So if I want to go in, um, I have all these decorative. Shit. <laughs> Sorry, I thought I turned it off. It's all right, Pat. <laughs> okay, it's off. Okay. Um, so, uh, so these are all basically decorative stitches that we can apply to a line in our IQ designer. So any shape, which there's a ton of shapes built into this, but say I want to make like a little feather rectangle. Check this out. Oh, wrong button, Brad. Look at this. How cool is that? I love it. And of course, you can change the scale and the spacing and all that. So if we want to make this bigger, all we got to do is increase that number. And, and our changes happen right away. We don't have like a separate menu we have to go into to change them. So that's really neat. You can go in and pick any of these and apply that to it. Um, and we could even create like a, a, like a feather look by taking this and saving it and then bringing in another one and doing what's called a flip, because watch what I can do with this. I can flip it so it goes on the inside too. But yeah? The red square. The red square. The red square yeah. is on this. Is that the outside? The, can't sew outside of that line? No, that is the edge of my line that. Six by six. Is that? No, that's not the six by six. Hang on. It's just, um, it's, it's just the hoop that is currently selected, actually. That's what it is. If I go into the machine, I, I've got the 6x6 six six frame selected in here. Right. Um, so that's what it's showing me. It's showing me that that, that design won't fit in the, the, the frame that I have selected on this page. But it doesn't matter what frame you have selected, really. It's just kind of a guideline for you, um, which you can turn that on or off. Uh, I just I have it set for the 6x6 six six frame. I don't, I don't know why in particular <laughs> it is. But, um, uh, all right, so other cool stuff we can do. So you may have, you may have seen it when I, uh, when I brought up that list of, of line stitches, but we now have the ability to create applet. I finally got it off. Okay. We now have the ability to create applique stitches other than a satin stitch for a top stitch, okay? So you may have seen or come to classes where we make appliques in the IQ Designer, and our options were to use as our top stitch, we could use either a, um, a satin stitch, or you could use a, um, like a candle wick or a chain stitch as your, as your applique stitch, but that's not quite as, that's not quite as good as having a blanket stitch. Look at that. So you can do it as a traditional blanket stitch. You can also do it as a V stitch. <laughs> Some people like to use a V stitch for applique. Uh, you can do either one. Um, I'm going to set to the normal applique, like a blanket stitch. Uh, we can adjust the bite. <coughs> oh, also, by the way, you can zoom in on this page just like that, which is nice. So if I want to be able to see what I'm doing a little closer. Um, we can also change the amount of <coughs> repeats that each stitch takes. So right now I've got it set on three. I can do one, three, or five. Okay, so that's how many times it's going over each one of those bites, right? So I'm going to set that to five, make it nice and thick. Okay, it doesn't look any different on the screen, but it looks different when you actually sew it out. All right, so uh, another thing that we can do is if we want to have our applique stitch flipped on the outside of our design. Like say we had a little circle on the inside of this that we wanted cut out and not have any fabric on the inside of it. We can flip this just like I flipped the other one. So I can make this e-stitch come out on the outside of the design. So that is really, really neat. We've never had the ability to do anything like that in the IQ designer before. <clears throat> so, so that's pretty cool. Um, so let's see, I need to save this because I'm going to use this a little bit later. Uh, we'll come back to this guy. Um, so I'm going to save this onto the machine. I'm actually going to want, um, I forgot to erase these. 
I'm going to want another version of it too. I want one that's just a run stitch. You'll see why when, when I get to this part of what I'm going to show you. All right. So let's see. So that's a bunch of the new stuff in IQ Designer. There's other neat stuff I can show you. Actually, before I move on, I'm going to pass some of these around. So this is a page of some of the decorative fills. Here, let me show the camera for the people that couldn't make it. These are, these are all the new fills. There's 15 of them. I'm probably standing in the way of this thing. All right. People at home can pause it. Here we go. We'll pass that around. And then this is something that I didn't think of doing. But when I came back from St. Louis and I saw this, I was like, oh my god, that's amazing. So this is using the, the, the shift, the pattern shift, where you can move your, your, uh, where the design is, is focused on. And what they did is they shifted, for instance, this one. It's, it's two patterns overlaid on top of each other. Okay? And one is shifted so that it hits right in the middle of the, the diamond shape that's created from this part. You see that? And then they just sewed it out of two different colors. That is, like, I never would have thought to do that. <laughs> but you can do that. So this is just different amounts of shift and what patterns it creates. So I'm going to pass this one around so you can see that closer. Um, but I really, really, really like that. Um, all right, so before I get into um, before I get into building my my pattern for the little thing I'm going to sew out for you, I want to show you some of the things in our uh, in our embroidery designs that are built into this machine because there's some really neat stuff. Um, oh, and I didn't talk about the stylus either. This has a new stylus that works kind of like a pen. Um, before I go off on a tangent. This makes it a lot easier to draw shapes right on your screen. Okay, So if I want to draw something, this feels a lot better to draw with than the stylus on the Destiny or even on the Elissimo, with, which had you know, the ability to do that on-screen designer. Um, you had to jump through a bunch of hoops to do it. But it's really hard to draw right on the screen because of the type of screen that it was. But with this capacitive touch screen, it is much, much easier to draw a shape directly on the screen. Okay, And it has to be a special type of, of um, stylus in order for this to work. But it doesn't have to be this stylus. Okay, I went and bought one that has a finer point just to see whether it would work, and it does. Okay, so this one, where's the camera? You drinking water over here? I'm sorry. I'm hydrating. It's like impossible to find good help. All right. You got it? All right. So this, I forget the brand of it, but it's, you know, I bought it at Walmart. Anything that says that it works with a capacitive touch screen is going to work. Okay. So this allows me to draw right on the screen using a much finer point. Did you see that? Yeah. So, I mean, this is, this is a lot easier to draw with really than this, but they're both kind of easy to, to deal with. So anyway. In case you were concerned about how broad the tip is on there, I was actually talking to um, the people at Baby Lock, and they are uh, they're shopping different types of stylus that you know they'll they'll have. Uh, there was there was one I, I don't know whether this is actually going to happen or not, but she was talking about this set of styli that have differently sized tips for doing different things. Because this big broad tip would actually be good for if you're using the paintbrush instead of the instead of the line. So this is actually. See, I've got a big fat line there, and you can adjust how how big your your pointer is. So that's like, you know, almost the size of the tip of my stylus. So if you're drawing with that, then this stylus is 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 great. Um, but anyway, so I just wanted to mention that uh, before I moved on here. All right, so I'll cut that out. So you go to embroidery and. <laughs> So one of the things that's really, really neat on this is the way that it displays your designs that you have um, that, are, that come with the machine. If we go into exclusives, we see that we've got all these different categories and all these different designs. So let me bring some of these up so we can see them a little closer. Look at this guy. He's got like Zentangle going on. and. That is really neat. And you can blow these up. These actually scale really, really well. In fact, I have one of these sewn out uh, as, as big as I could possibly fit it in the hoop. Looks really cool. I have it over there. Uh, but these are all designs that are just in the, in the first category. And 
if you want, you can have it display more of them at once on the screen. You can zoom in and out just by pinching. So instead of having to go into my settings and change the size of my, of my icons display. So if I don't need them to be real big, I can make them really small. You know, if I can see well enough to do that, now I can see all of the designs on the screen and I have room to, to see my preview up here of what my design is going to look like. So you have the option to do it however you want. Um, so we've got all these different categories. Watch this. There's just a ton of categories in here, right? And each one of these is full of designs. Like, uh, let's see, where's the... Celebrities is all designs that were made by the Baby Lock celebrities. So the people that you see talking about Baby Lock on their YouTube channel and people that are uh, bloggers that have um, you know, influence. And, and the, the majority of these are things that are made to work with projects that the various Baby Lock celebrities are, are coming out with. Okay? So um, you, know, you may, you may want to use them on your own for you know, an element of something. Oh yeah, that's the, that's the wolf head. Oh yeah, you can, you can pass those around too. This is a, just a, a small sampling of the designs um, that we have stitched out so far. Um, we, we've only had the machine for so long, so, and, and I demo it a lot. So a lot of times we have to interrupt actually sewing out these designs. Um, and so I don't have nearly all of them. There's over 700 designs built into this thing. So we don't have nearly all of them sewn out. But all of them sew out really beautifully. Um, and I'm a, I'm a big fan of the new stuff that they've put in here. Um, so, uh, all right, so where was I going with this? We got all these different uh, designs to pick from. This is what's in the celebrities page. I really like this vintage. Look, oh, look at this. Look at this, look at this typewriter. I think that's awesome, <laughs> right? That's really cool. Um, the, uh, the machine also, of course, has the stitch simulator. Uh, which was an upgrade on the Destiny 2, but here I can watch a design sew out. And uh, so th with, the, with the designs that are built into the machine, um, you can pretty much trust that they're going to sew out well, but if you go buy a design off of Etsy for $2, it helps if you look at the way that it sews out before you sew it out to see whether it's worth even doing. If you've had, a, if you've had problems with cheap embroidery designs, you'll know what I'm talking about. If they're, if they're not digitized well, you can see it. You can see it when it's sewing out because it'll be jumping all over the place and not following a logical, consistent path through, through the design. Um, so I, I like having this um, stitch simulator on here. It just gives you an idea for how the machine's going to sew out. And we can choose the speed for this. So if we want it to go fast, we can. I really like it. Um, let me go back to embroidery here. So, so that's our, uh, our, our designs that are the exclusives that are built in. Like I said, there's a ton of those. They're beautiful. So I'm just going to bring in one. All right, so now we've got a design in embroidery edit mode, right? And if I want, I could go in and resize this design. And we can choose whether we want it to do the, um, uh, keep the, the density the same or not, which is what I just did. But now to change the size, I have options here. I don't have to use these buttons where you know, it has the arrows facing in. I can actually pinch to zoom to change the size, just like that. I guess pinch to change the size, not pinch to zoom, because that's what I'm doing. Um, or I can grab one of the corners and just drag it. And it gives me a preview for, for how big it is. Isn't that neat? There's just different ways you can do stuff. Like we're kind of trained nowadays on our, on our phones to do certain gestures to make certain things happen. Um, so if your hands are trained to pinch to zoom or pinch to change the size or something like that, it works. It works either way. The old way works. This way works. Um, so. Yeah. Okay, so if I pinched and made it larger, uh -huh. of course, let's buy some imagination. I made it bigger than the hoop and I can split the design. Okay, so the machine isn't going to split the design for you, but the software that you're getting with the machine can. Okay, Palette is able to split embroidery designs for you. And palette is probably the best thing to use to split a design. You can split a design in many, many different programs. Okay, there's tons of them. Uh, but palette is going to split it the way this machine likes it to be split. Um, and 
that's the way you should split a design if you have palette. If you have palette and you have embroidery works and you have Floriani, use palette because it's going to split it the best way for this because it's specifically made for it. Um, uh, but, but yeah, I'm not going to get into uh, splitting designs in this demonstration here, but you can do it. So essentially, you could have a design sew out as big as you want um, if you're willing to rehoop it. Uh, having the projector is going to make it a lot easier to, to, to line up if you're doing multiple hoopings. Um, but I say that this machine won't split designs. It actually does split a certain type of design, uh, which is a quilting outline. Um, if I go into the embroidery mode and I pick from this section here, is it focused on a good spot? OK, good. <laughs> I didn't know if we had the horse over here. My camera person. It's all right. It's in the right place. That's another one of the ones that's built. That's from the vintage uh, section there, the same one that the, the um, typewriter was in. Actually, somebody had this sewn on the back of a leather jacket at Baby Lock Tech and had, uh, she put in these little dots here, she had put uh, crystals. It looked really amazing. Yeah. But um, so the, uh, the, the thing where you can actually split a design, um, it, these 10 borders can be split. You put in the size of the, of the block that you're making. So this won't do an entire quilt, but we'd be able to do like a big giant block Okay, the maximum width is 19-ish inches and the maximum height is 29-ish inches. I don't know how they settled on that, but it is what it is. So we can go in and, and say, okay, so say the, the block that I'm doing is 15 by 15. Oh, I forgot to hit set. And I want each iteration of the design to be two and a half inches, right? We just hit next here. And it's going to do some math, and it splits my design into two pieces. Wow. All right, and then if I go and save this, it saves it as a single design that will then sew out concurrently. So I'd sew out the first part, and then it'll go through the process for linking up the design for the second part. Okay, so so that would be 15 inches by 15 inches, which would be too wide for this hoop to do. Um, so it, it splits it in two pieces, and it'll split it up to four. Um, so if I did this at the maximum size. So we say we make this 29, we make this 19, and we'll make this, uh, well, we'll do it smaller so that it has to size them down. Because it actually calculates how many of the, of the little swirly it needs to do. See that? So that's four separate embroidery designs. So if we we're doing like a placemat or something like that, we could have a big giant placemat made with the, the border going all the way around it. And it automatically calculates how many of those uh, it needs in order to fill that entire space. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So in a way, you can split a design, but you can't, you can't go and split any design on board. It's got to be one of those. Um, so uh, some other neat stuff that we've got here. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, load up some of the um, designs that we made that I was playing with earlier. I'm going to bring in this guy, and then we're going to add my blanket stitch on top. OK, so we've got a new ability in our embroidery section, which allows us to put echo quilting behind an existing design. Okay, So on your uh, Destiny 2, you were able to put stippling behind an existing design. But now I have the option of, instead of stippling, doing echoes. So it's going to come in by default. It comes in at the maximum size. But look at that. So it's tracing the outside edge of my design and echoing it out towards the end of the hoop. I don't want it quite this big. I'm going to do just a six by six area here. But there we go. We've got this. We can go and adjust the distance from our shape. We can adjust the spacing. Oh, that's too much. I'm going to do 0.32 just because. And we'll see it generate here in a second. There we go. Nice little echo. All right, we'll say OK. And there we've got our design. I can also select multiple objects at once. Remember how I had the, uh, the run stitch that I brought in first? I don't know if you caught that, but I brought in a run stitch first. You'll see why in a minute. But I can hit this button down here to quickly select all. Now, you can do that on the Destiny, but it's, it's one extra step. 
um, and I don't have to I don't have to do that. So I bring this in, and I'm going to add another design in, and I'm going to show you something really nifty. So remember when I made my kind of crazed looking basket weave here, right? I'm going to take this, and I'm gonna just going to kind of get it roughly lined up up here. This is totally new. We couldn't do this on any other machine, all right? And I don't know why, because it's like, duh, why wouldn't you want to be able to do this? But I'm going to select everything, and I'm going to align it on the center. Isn't that awesome? Like, why couldn't we do that before? I don't know, but we can now. Yay! That is so great. I really, really love that. And I'll show you why this is, this is really, really excellent. I'm going to save this because I, I need this for later. Save this onto the machine, but check this out. Say we had a design and we had some lettering with it. That's the word I always use for obvious reasons. Oh, I wanted the other one. All right, well, forget it. I forgot to group my letters, but that's all right. So I've got my letters, and I want to make sure that they are perfectly aligned with this. This is the kind of thing where this is really vital. If you end up having your letters askew from your design, it's going to look very dumb. You don't want that. You want it to look good. So previously, I would always use software because the software would have those types of alignment tools. But now I can do it right on the machine. I can just select all, and then align it, and you can align it anywhere you want. I don't have to align it to the center. I could align everything to the left. I could align everything to the top, although we wouldn't do that with this particular design. There are things that you would want to align to the top. So you can align it any way you like, um, and I am a big fan of them adding that. Particularly, what I should have done there was not that. What I should have done was a curved letters on the top and curved letters on the bottom, because that's really hard to get lined up. But I mean, there's a million things you could use it for. Um, besides uh, just that. So uh, let's see, wh where was I? I was bringing in my, um, my little project here. So at Baby Lock Tech, they had us make this little project. Oh, where's my pretty one? Here we go. <laughs> this, was, uh, this was practice. I was, I was like, just give me some any old project. It came out pretty good. But so what this is, is um, <laughs> this is a CD case. Or uh, the other thing that I was doing with it is I can actually fit my external, huh? Oh, yeah, right. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> Thanks a lot, Kate. Sorry. <laughs> so, so this is an in-the-hoop project, OK? So we just take this, and we can open the little ribbon that we made. And it's got a pocket in there. Sorry, Kate. I had her tie this bow earlier. This art. So it's got a little pocket. And we can see we've got the echoes, and we've got the, the so I put, my, uh, I put my external hard drive in there, just looking for stuff to put in there. So anyway, we're going we're gonna to make this in the hoop real quick. And there's like features and such that I can show you as it does it. Um, so um, yeah, let's do that. So I've got my little kit. So the first thing I want to show you in this is you guys that have Destinies and Alissimos, you know how you've got the laser foot for embroidery? Okay, that is going to project a dot right where the center of your design goes. Notice that there's nothing plugged in to the back of my Solaris here. This does not come with the laser foot. Okay, it is an optional accessory. But I don't know why you would ever get it because this machine has something way cooler. So I've just made a crease in my fabric here just so that I have something to line up to. I didn't want to write anything on my, on my fabric. But watch what happens when I go in here. Oh, you know what? I think I have this. I think I have my projector set to the same color as my fabric. That's not going to work. <laughs> watch what happens when I hit the same button that you would use to turn on your laser foot. can't see it. All right. I can see it, but you're not going to be able to see it on the screen. Let me turn off the lights for a second. Maybe we'll be able to see it a little bit better. Hang on. Wait for it. 
There we go. All right. Can you see that? It's a crosshair. Okay. It's a cross. So that is so much more useful than a single blob of light. So I can use this to go in and change the position of my design. And I want this to be right on the middle of my crease. So I can line up the middle part of the crosshair and I can line up the line. And I could touch on the screen and drag it too if I wanted to, but I'm, I wanted to do it this way. So you can actually see, look at that. Isn't that cool? So you don't need the laser foot. I don't even know why they list it as an option. What would you do with it? Like there's no point. Um, not that you know, I won't take your $130 or whatever, but like, <laughs> you don't need it. This is way cooler. So that is, uh, that is awesome. Now, of course, we can also use the projector to project our design onto the fabric, but that doesn't, my eye can still be tricked that way. You know, I could look at it on the fabric and say, yeah, that looks straight to me. But then I go and sew it out and it's, you know, I, it, it wasn't because my eyes aren't perfect. This will get you dead perfect center. Yeah. You can't rotate the projection, at least not at this time. That's a really good idea, though. The, I actually found the, the person that I, that I need to talk to about this kind of stuff um, at Baby Lock. His name's Charlie. And uh, so I have a whole list of things that are, that are things that are easily What's done. The next version of Solaris coming out? Well, no, I think we're talking, we're talking regular updates with this kind of stuff, like things that, that are easily changed. That's something that I think they could easily do because the projector doesn't care you know, what it's projecting. It could be anything. So you could make it rotate that. That's a, I'll, I will bring that up with them. To, so, so the question was, um, if you have something that's not hooped straight up and down and something's at an angle, can you change the angle of this projection? And you cannot. Um, but uh, yeah, it's a good idea to make it do that. So I'll bring that up. I'll, put, I'll, add to, I'll add that to my list. One of the other things is when you're doing that position changing, it takes forever to, to hold the button down to change it any significant amount in the IQ Designer. We should be able to just type in a number there. No reason not to be able to. Anyway, um, so uh, let's go ahead and, and switch that off and use our actual projection here. So look at that. This is where my design is going to go. Okay, so I can see exactly where my applique is and where my echoes are. Isn't that awesome? So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to applique this. Now I'm going to use some of the embroidery glitter that we have. Something that I learned while we were at Baby Lock Tech. Look at that. You can see right where it is. Isn't that awesome? I can go down to the bottom, make sure it fits perfectly. It does. I love it. Um, so one of the things that I learned while we were at Baby Lock Tech is that while it is possible to use regular uh, heat transfer glitter, the kind that has the backing on it, you, you can use that the same way that you use this embroidery glitter, but it is much harder to tear. So if, if you look at my sample, oh, it's got my thing in it here. I'll pass this guy around. If you look at my sample, you'll see where I, I was unable to get it to, to tear away perfectly. Um, that's because they had uh, heat transfer that they peeled off of a backing. If you use this stuff that we have for sale over here, that embroidery glitter material, it's, it's actually designed for that. It's much easier to tear away. Anyway, so I am going to go ahead and stitch out the first part of this, which is going to be the applique. Oop. So I've got my thread that matches my backing or my, my material, but contrasts with this thing. Hit OK, foot down. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to sew out that running stitch that we did, that I put in there first. Now the reason that I put that in was so that my glitter doesn't shift at all while it's embroidering, because I actually noticed that everybody in the class ended up having like a pinched part at the top because it didn't do that. <laughs> it just went and did the applique all the way around. So I'm going to let this uh, let this sew out here. 
and then I'm going to sew out the, um, the blanket stitch. Oh, you notice anything different about the way this sounds? It's quieter. It is way quieter. And the reason that it's quieter is twofold. One, they use different motors, completely different motors than the, the Destiny used. Um, so they are actually quieter motors. And the second is on the inside of this arm, what, what there used to be was off of the motor that drives it was a little gear. And that little gear is what the belt was attached to. And the, the sound that you're hearing when it's going kink, 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 is the, the metal and the plastic gear pushed together. They make that sound every time they turn. So this now is entirely belt driven. So the belts are all hooked directly to the motors instead of having a gear in there too. I took the cover off and looked at it. Me and Mark both did. Um, and, and it's cool. It has, it has one more belt and it doesn't have any plastic gears in there that, that make that make that noise. So that's really cool. Yeah. Well, it's the same belts that the, all the older machines used. And I can not think of a single time I've ever replaced a belt in an embroidery unit. Um, and they have adjustable tensioners. So like if they were like loose, you just adjust the tensioner on it. Um, and I've never seen a tooth break on one of them. I'm not saying that it can't happen, but I've, I've never seen it. Um, I would be really surprised if you ever needed one. Plus they're like 15 bucks, so. <laughs> but how does he know the price of them if he's never replaced one? I'm just guessing. <laughs> um, so, so this is sewing out. Um, once this finishes doing my applique and I rip away the, the glitter, uh, I'm going to let it sew out the rest of the design, and then I'm going to show you some really neat stuff um, on pallet. Um, but let's see, can I think of some other really nifty things to tell you about? Oh, we've got an adjustable bobbin winder now, so go ahead and show them this. We can set on our bobbin winder how full we want our bobbin to be. So if we've got, isn't that awesome? Look at this. This is adjustable here. On my video, I said it's a four position, but I was wrong. It's actually got five separate positions. Um, so we can say we're only doing a little bit left. You know, we only need a little bit of this thread wound on there. We can put it all the way down here and only get like, you know, 10 yards of, of thread on there, however much uh, you need. So that is really, really nifty. I like having that. Um, other, oh, Wi-Fi. This, this has built-in Wi-Fi and I have it set up for my pallet. It was so easy to set up. Is there anybody here that has air stitch? Janet, you have air stitch and you have air stitch. You ever use it? No? Janet, do you ever use it? Oh, yes, excellent. <laughs> well, that's because that's I set it up for you. <laughs> There's like maybe eight people in the world that could set up an air stitch for you, and I'm one of them. So, <laughs> so um, it's funny because I talked to other dealers, and none of them ever used the air stitch. If you don't know what air stitch is, it doesn't matter. <laughs> what it is, is it was the way that you could do wireless on the Destiny. And while you can do that on this one too, so if you have air stitch and you like using air stitch, you don't even have to change any settings, Janet. If you just want to use the air stitch instead of the pallet, you just plug your SD card into this instead and it'll work the same way. So, um, but um, for everyone else, <laughs> The, you don't have to do any setup at all. You just connect this to your, to your Wi-Fi. You tell the pallet to look for the sewing machine, and it comes up, and that's it. It's, it's connected. And as long as they're on the same network, yeah. The bobbin, you were talking about the bobbin a second ago. Yeah. On the Destiny 2, it was already down at the bottom within the screen, and all you had to do was take less or more. No, that was your speed. Yeah, that's not, that's not a mount. That's speed. And this works the, this works the same way as that. If I, if I activate this, I've got my, my, you do. Yeah. But this is only the speed. So, um, back in the, uh, in the, in the days of, uh, what was the, the, I think the Elegante didn't have a speed control at all for your bobbin winder. It was the first one to have a separate motor for the bobbin winder. All oh, right. I can wind bobbins while I'm embroidering, right? But you couldn't adjust the speed. So if you're winding monofilament, it would break the bobbin. <laughs> So anyway, that's why they have a speed control now. But it's got the fill control as well. 
What, am I good on time? You're, yeah, you're yeah. fine. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I am going to teach palette classes. So uh, with, as with any software that you get from us, with Palette, you're going to get unlimited one-on-one -on -one instruction for life. And if I have enough interest, and if people actually sign up for it when I do it, um, we are going to have Palette classes as well. So I assume it'll be something like a Palette club, kind of like how I have Floriani Club. Now, Floriani Club, I still get a good amount of people every time I do it. Um, so as long as people show up to Palette Club, then we'll do it. And it may be me every time. It may be Terry sometimes. I don't know. We'll see. So are you, can you see me ripping this away here? I'm being careful because I don't want it to be ugly, especially after I told you that it was easier to, uh, to do it with the, with the actual embroidery glitter, which it is. I mean, it's coming away super clean right now. I'm doing it a little slower than I would in real life, so to speak. But I want it to look pretty. Oh, I just messed it up. That's what I get for yammering instead of doing it. Well, if I did, it wouldn't have cut the vinyl quite as much. So I, you, this is designed to be ripped off after your top stitch. Um, it's not like using a normal applique material. Um, it, is, it is made to be cut by your top stitch. So a satin stitch cuts it really well. The blanket stitch it doesn't have quite as many uh, penetrations as close to each other as, uh, um, as a satin stitch does. So I did, I left a little teeny tiny bit right there. But overall, it looks really good. So now, huh? I'm not going to use applique scissors. I'm just saying, Whole point. Yeah, tweezers, tweezers would work. Yeah, scissors, go! I'll use scissors. All right, so uh, I am going to go ahead and unthread this and, oh, I need scissors. I'm going to do it the right way. I'm going to pull the thread through this way, which is you, sh you should always do that. That's probably the first time I've ever done it that way, though. Um, <laughs> you should always do that. Do as I say, not as I do, generally. I just I have bad habits that I've always had forever, and I'm not going to change. And if I get the thread caught in the machine, I know how to get it out. All right, so I'm just threading this up so I can sew out the rest of my design. Now, I meant to actually. Um, make the rest of this design a single color, but I can easily remedy the fact that it's blue and red by going um, into the, the screen here and hitting this icon. Now, full disclosure, you can do this on a Destiny 2, but this will go ahead and um, make the rest of the design mono so it just sews out without stopping. That's what I want it to do. And I'm going to let this sew out, and we're going to start talking about some of the cool stuff that I can do in palette. So, let's go over here to this computer, and I think what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to grab that cable, see if I can't get it to reach so that I can have the screen broadcast directly to you instead of having it on a, um, on a camera. Yeah. This is how technologically advanced we are here at Ellicott City Sovac. Get in there. OK, and we're live. Yeah, you can see that? OK, cool. So let's look at some neat stuff we can do in Palette, all right? So everything that I can do in IQ Designer, I can do in Palette. But I can also do a lot more stuff. So remember we were talking about the, the different fills that I have. I have all of the background fills that are built into the IQ Designer in Palette. So I could be not even at my sewing machine and start playing with these decorative fill patterns. So I can go in and pick any of these. Notice there's a Batman one up there. How did he get Batman? We'll get to that and pick any of these same decorative fill patterns that I had, plus there's extra ones. This is one that's not even there in the Destiny, or in the Solaris. Yeah? With palette, can you create whatever you're going to do here and see if you don't just have a Destiny and not Yes, the absolutely. This is totally compatible with, with the Destiny. Um, all right, so 
Here, I'm just going to bring one of these in just so, to have something in here. So, so here, I've, I've just imported this decorative fill. Say I want to take this and send it over to my machine. I just go send a network machine, sewing machine. Okay, it's, it's doing stuff over there, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. I can be playing on my palette and sending designs over here while this is running. Totally fine. Isn't that awesome? So I've just created this, this background fill, but look what happens if I go in and I hit the background fill button again. I can actually go in here. This is a really stupid design to do this with. I'm going to do it anyway. I can select any open space inside of this fill pattern and apply another fill pattern to the inside of any open space. Isn't that cool? I'm actually not going to do it with this pattern because that, that is going to look too stupid. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to do it real quick. So I'm going to bring in something that you would actually do that with. Say, this is what I get for not memorizing where stuff is. I mean, I guess it doesn't really matter. I just want to do one that I know looks cool. All right, we'll do this. Well, we could do Batman, yeah. I meant to delete Batman out of there after I made him. All right, so I'm going to do this cross hatching um, and. There we go. OK, so real simple. We've got diamonds, right? But check this out. Hit background fill. Huh? Huh? Look at that. It's got flowers in it now. Isn't that neat? So then I could actually take this. I'm just going to leave this at the default and say OK. So now I've got diamonds with flowers in the diamonds, but maybe I just want the flowers. Watch this. Isn't that, cool? Isn't that cool? I really, really like that. I, I'm, I'm a big fan. I think that that is awesome that you're able to do that. So now, it doesn't have, you don't have to make your, your designs that way, though. Any shape will work with this. Okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to be a shape that's generated out of a decorative fill pattern, although it's awesome that you can do that. We can go in and bring in anything. So I could bring in lettering. No, oh, I, picked, I picked a really tiny font on accident. All right, well, whatever. I'll just make it bigger. All right, something like that. And we'll stretch it so it's big. I mean, this is going to look, if I picked a better font, this would look better. But that's all right. So we're going to go in, and we're going to use our background fill. We're going to go in and make it so that it works this time. Hang on. There we go. We're going to go into our background fill. And I can do the same thing with this. So this, this was just a shape uh, uh, that I brought in using the lettering tool. And I tell it I want to do a decorative fill. But actually, no, let's do something different. Let's do an echo fill. So remember how we could do an echo on the, on the, the Solaris? I can do that. But I can also do a better echo where it echoes not just from the, outs, from the inside out, but also from the outside in. Can you see that? Yeah. 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 That's really nifty. And I can adjust the settings of that, too. I can, I can change the, um, the, the spacing between them right now at 6.3, which is like a quarter inch. But I could make it spaced differently. If I wanted it to be like closer to a half inch, I can do that. I'll update the preview here. Right. So I mean, that's not nearly as impressive. I don't know why I did that. But we can change it also from being just a simple run stitch. We can change it to being a chain stitch. We can also change the stitch type from a single uh, triangle to a, uh, to a diamond, which you can't see in the preview of the difference. But it just it looks a little bit different when you, when you sew it out. Or we can have a triple stitch. So it would make it a bean stitch, nice and, nice and thick. Right? And notice that it's got echoes on the inside of these letters, because I set it to do that. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, right. It's, isn't it a shame? Um, so I could also, I could also have done instead of echoing the outside, I could go in and put a decorative fill on the inside of these letters. So maybe I want to have these letters 
kind of be their own thing. If I go in and I set this to one of these decorative fills, there we go. And we can delete the, the outer part. And I'm left with just this part, which I could go in and turn off the outline. Like I had to put an outline around the stitches or around the, the letters in order for it to come into the background fill. Um, but now that I have the background fill there, I don't need that black outline around them anymore. And this just sews out just like this. Hey, let's send that to the machine. Yeah, it goes over as a PES. Um, speaking of design formats, this machine does use a different format internally than the other machines. It still uses PES, uh, but on a Destiny or on a Alissimo, it used PHC as its internal format. This one uses PHX, which means if you've got a design that's on the machine, like one of those big giant um, you know, wolf heads or whatever, uh, if you want to go and work on it on your computer, you have to use Palette. Um, so if you wanted to take that and incorporate it into something else that, and you wanted to do it on a computer, Palette's the only game in town at the moment. I don't know whether that will change or not. Uh, they said that it won't, but who knows? Yeah. Are you saying that a design that's in the Solaris can be taken out? It can, but you have to use your Palette software. Okay. Yeah. In other words, we could use Imbrilliant software with the PHC. Right. right. But you can't use that with the Correct. But it doesn't use other formats besides the Solaris format. I mean, if you couldn't take that design. Yeah, you could. If you use the palette, you could. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, don't do that. <laughs> but yeah, you absolutely could. <laughs> oh, okay. So the question was, uh, can you um, take one of those designs that are built into the Solaris, import it into the palette, and then use it on another machine whose name starts with B that's not brother? <laughs> and I said, yeah, absolutely you can. Because you, you, once it's a PES file, it can be converted to anything. Um, so yeah, you totally can do that. Don't do that. You can do that. <laughs> um, so uh, where was I going with this? All right, so this is really cool. I can make my letters really awesome. My, desi my design sewed out faster than I thought it was going to. Um, uh, but there's something else I want to show you on palette before I jump back over to the machine. Um, what time is it? It is 2.26. OK, how about I finish doing my spiel on palette, and then we take a break, eat some desserts? I don't know. Yeah. Are the desserts here yet? Yeah. Okay, yeah. I have a question about yeah. palette. Go ahead. Yeah. Reference to what you need to have on your computer in order to have the palette. Okay. Is that written someplace, you know, about how big your RAM has to be, how big your, your If you have a computer, okay, so the question is the system requirements for palette. Um, and I don't know what they are off the top of my head. It's actually written on the box, wherever the box went. Uh, but the actual honest answer is if your computer is less than five years old, it'll work. Here, let me see it. All right, so here's your official system requirements. Windows 7 or above, a gigabyte of RAM or more. I mean, every computer has more than a gigabyte of RAM, trust me. You need, the, you need four just to run Windows 7. Uh, 600 megabytes of hard drive space. Ooh, that's like nothing. Um, and uh, a USB port. An XGA monitor. That's from like 1990. All right, so yeah. It is not Mac compatible. If you want to run it on a Mac, you've got to use Parallels. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're preaching to the choir. Um, so you can still use um, the Imbrilliance, or not Imbrilliance. You got me saying Imbrilliance. Whoever said Imbrilliance? The uh, Embroidery Works, which is completely different and not the same software at all as Imbrilliance. Um, uh, the, uh, <laughs> uh, you can still use that on, um, on a Mac. You know, you have the ability to run that at least. Unfortunately, you're not going to be able to import PHX files, but you would be able to do work and send it to the machine just fine. I think Baby Lock should include our PC if they resign it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they might at some point. One time they included a TV. I think with the, uh, with the Elegante, it came with a, with a small flat screen TV, which we still use two of as monitors to this very day uh, in, in, uh, as our cash register. And actually, this is one of them back here. So. Anything's possible. All right, so uh, any other questions before I show the next really awesome thing that I can do in here? Okay, so Palette does a million things. It's a digitizing program, right? It 
digitizes embroidery designs. But one thing that it does better than all other digitizing programs is photo stitch. Okay, so that's taking a, a photograph and turning it into an embroidery design. Pallet figured that out long ago, and I guess they just have the patent on it because nobody has ever had one that works quite as good uh, as Pallet's does. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, create some photos for you real quick. Um, I'm going to change the orientation of my, um, of my design field. Rotate 90. All right, and then we're going to go into image, and we're going to choose a photograph. So let's see, the first one we're going to do is, uh, we'll do meadow, right? <laughs> of course. Exactly, of course. All right, so right in, uh, in, in this screen, I can go in and crop it down so I get only the parts of the image that I want. There we go. Um, if I want to have like a circle, I can do that. Like maybe I want to have like a little kind of framed picture of her face. And I don't need to have all this background. You know what I mean? So we're going we're gonna to do that. And uh, we hit next here. And this is what it sees. And we're like, OK, we could change the size of it now. I'm going to make it just as big as possible just so that you can see it well. And we're going to hit next. And then it thinks for a little while. OK, so there's, there's what it's made. Um, the, uh, this is in stitches. Now, when we go to sew this out, it's going to look closer to this than when I hit finish here. It's not able to render the thread on the computer screen the way that it looks in real life. And mom has one of these that we made of, her, of, of uh, you know, a dog that she used to have. And was supposed to bring it today, so that I had one to show you, um, but I don't have one to show you, unfortunately, because she <laughs> forgot. It's not my fault. And uh, but these, I mean, these do take a long time to sew out. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. This isn't something you're going to do and make like 15 of these a day. All right, this is like you're going to make one of these in two days. But anyway, I'm going to hit finish and let it actually digitize the design. Um, you can choose your uh, your amount of threads. So one thing that you can do if your design doesn't pull out enough detail because there's not enough contrast in the in the person or animal's uh, face or fur, if there's not enough contrast, you can actually go in and just add more colors until it's able to pull out more detail uh, in, in the design. Uh, and there we go. So there we go. There's Meadows. There's Meadows' face. And you really you can't go by what it looks like on this screen because it it looks better than that when you sew it out. Let me put this in. There we go. If I turn it off realistic mode, you see the jumps, but it actually looks a little bit better. OK? So you can see the detail in there. This is pretty sweet. All right, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get rid of this image, and we're going to do something else. Um, so we had, uh, let's see. Oop. I, just, I just zoomed way in by accident. You know, actually, it might be smarter of me to do one a little bit smaller because this is so big that you can't really see the detail. Because when you zoom out, when you have it zoomed out so far, the stitches are so, so close together, you can't see all this detail. Anyway, let me, um, okay, we need, huh? How many stitches? It's uh, 148,000. Yeah, you'll be changing needles and bobbins. You need like 10 bobbins, yeah. Right? All right, so uh, let's do something else. Let's do, uh, let's do me. So this is a picture of me. That's what I look like. All right, and then um, I'm not going to fit this into the page. I'm going to make this about this big, say. Maybe I will fit it to the page. Let's see what it spits out here. All right, why you gonna break? Yeah. This program you're using, Palette, yeah. Well, that's a software, but it has to go on a PC, correct? Correct. Okay. So the question was, does it only work on PC? The answer is yes. So up here, I can choose what thread chart I'm using. So let's see, I'll say Floriani. Like I said, we can change the max number of colors. If we're doing 10 colors, What's well, another five, right? So we'll make that 15. Uh, and then another thing that we can do on here is we can hit this down here, select from candidates. I can adjust the brightness and contrast of you know, what it's working from. But if, if I don't know what I'm doing by adjusting these sliders, I can just hit this button. And it's going to give me a bunch of options for different lighting scenarios. 
and I can pick whichever one I think looks the best. Okay, so if I'm going for something that's uh, kind of washed out, or if I want something that's, you know, well, yeah, sinister. Well, hey, what are you trying to say? Yeah, no, I know, I am, I am pretty sinister. But I'm going to go ahead and hit finish, and we'll see what this spits out here. Isn't that, isn't that awesome? I love it. There's a few different ways you can do this, too. Like, if you've got a photo that doesn't do well in color, look at that. That's pretty good. Let's zoom in. Yeah, this is 15 colors. It's, uh, it's 124,000 stitches, so not that much, all things considered. I only did 10 for Meadow. I should have done 15. Oh, this is the, these are the, the different um, stitches, yeah. Yeah, so, so you can actually, here, let me, let me zoom in so we see the whole thing, and then I can actually play it. Oh, that's a little fast. But you can see, that's how it's building this design. Right? Let's send it to the machine. That's on the machine now, too. Right? So, right, so yeah, now that's on the machine. All right, so um, that's all I really wanted to show you in Palette. I mean, there's a million things I could show you on the software, but um, you're going to want to come in for... Uh, for palette class, right, and learn all the different things you can do. Yeah. What is the physical size and weight compared to the Destiny? Okay, so the Destiny is 39 pounds. Okay, the question is, what's the what's the physical size and weight? All right, so the Destiny is uh, is is 39 pounds. This machine is 44 pounds. Okay, so not that much more, um, and it is a little bit longer. So this has uh, the Destiny had 11 and a quarter inches of space from the right of the needle to the inside of the arm. This has 13, so it is a little bit longer. I measured it, it's about, th from tip to tip, it's about three inches longer, okay? So it is bigger, but that's why it's able to have a, a bigger sewing field uh, on, on the embroidery. So it won't fit in the, it won't fit in the... If you have a koala cabinet that was an original koala cabinet, um, that does not have an XL lift, it does not fit in one of those. If you have a trolley that fits a Destiny, did we try doing that? I don't think it'll fit in one of those, but it comes with a trolley. It fits in the one that it comes with. Yeah. I have heard that um, there's not a, a book. Oh, yeah, I didn't, I didn't get to that. Um, but yes, that is true. It does not come with a physical manual. The manual is built into the machine. Um, so. Trust me, that is, that is on the list. We, 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 we talked a lot about the manual at Baby Lock Tech, but the manual is very cool the way that it works, okay? So this manual is interesting because it is searchable and it is zoomable, okay? And it remembers where you were. So if I'm looking for something, like maybe I'm trying to figure out how to operate this newfangled projector, I can just go and type in Had to end the recording on the <laughs> on the computer over there. I can just type in. I don't even have to finish the word, right? I can just hit search, just like like Google or something, and it's going to come up. See there, where it found the word project. It's going to come up and show me the first time that that shows up in my manual. Okay, so here I can either just type directly in page ninety four, use it like a normal table of contents, or I can just keep hitting the arrow up here, and it's going to take me to each iteration of the word projector in, in the machine. I find it easier to just use the table of contents this way, use the search to find what page it is, and then go into the page. So if I go down to the bottom here, and I type in page 94, say OK, using the projector. OK, so I can go in and read what it says to do, and I can set it to whatever size is good for me. And I can read, okay, this says to do X, Y, and Z. Okay, all right, I think I got it. And we go in and we start doing whatever it says to do. Okay, it said to go here, it said to hit this button, it said to hit this button, and then hit this button. Uh, I forget what I'm supposed to do next. I can go back to my help screen, go back to my manual, and it leaves me, brings me right back to where I was. Okay, so that is pretty awesome. You can't do that with a, with a physical manual. Now, I realize that you can't like lay in bed and read it either, but they do have this, 
they do have this as a PDF, so you can download it onto your phone or your tablet and peruse it that way also. Um, you, you just use it, read the PDF. You printed yours out? It is possible also to print it out. It's like 600 pages, but you can do it. Well, the first, the first section is 200, but there's, there's, there's three parts to it. Uh, if you have a horn cabinet that fits a Destiny in it, that's the extra large opening, then probably. I haven't tried putting it in there. The, the one that it won't fit in is the one that they had to, if anybody remembers when the Destiny came out, they had to make a custom made insert to make it fit in the older cabinets. Um, that is the size that it won't fit, which I, I think is, I don't remember. I don't remember the size. I don't even want to say because I don't remember what the size is. But I, does it, what, what machine do you have in it? The Destiny? It should. It should. Because it really, the Destiny really didn't fit in the old one either, really. Like the, the problem with it is the machine is like shifted over all the way and you're sitting like in the wrong place if you're using the Destiny on the older Koala cabinet. So. I think it'll probably fit in the horn. We can try. We could stick it in. I have an extra wide horn cabinet over there. We can stick it in. Um, all right, so that's the manual. Um, all right, I think I said that we were going to break and eat snacks after this. Before we do that, is there anybody have any questions? Did, did anybody not sign? Oh, yeah. Anybody not sign the thing? Sign the thing so you get your free stuff. Oh, speaking of the free stuff. So you get not only. I'm sorry, I got to hit a button on here because this is doing stuff. Um, I, I actually. We'll have, to, we'll have to zoom in on this because I, I meant before I, before I closed out of this to show you the pictures that I took of the book that you're getting for coming to this thing. This thing being me showing you the new machine. Um, and I wanted to show you what it is. So it's basically, does everybody know what uh, an Anita All Access, Anita Good Design All Access book looks like? Yeah. It's, it's a magazine that has not just the designs, but how to use the designs uh, that, that come with it. And you're getting a custom made, sorry, I, thinking of where this is, there it is. You're getting a custom made Anita All Access magazine, basically. Okay, so this is a little over twice as thick as a normal uh, Anita All Access magazine. It's about this thick, okay? And everything that they're doing in this project book is done on a Baby Lock Solaris, okay? They are doing it. So if there's a machine involved, you're seeing them doing it on a, on a Solaris. If there's a hoop, it's the hoop that you have with this machine. Most of the designs that are coming with it um, are so big that you can't really use them without a Solaris. So <laughs> there's plenty that aren't. There's plenty that aren't. But um, so this is this is what it looks like. So I took a couple of pictures of the inside. So. This is what you're basically looking at. It's, it's all these designs with projects that are made specifically to teach you how to use the designs that are coming with it. That's 150 designs. This is the, the um, $700 value that you're getting for attending this today. So I just took a couple of pictures of it. They, they didn't have it totally finished yet. The, the reason we don't have this is because we got the machine before a lot of dealers did. Um, there are some dealers that haven't even got their floor model Solaris yet. Um, so we're able to do this because we're kind of a big deal. No, I'm just kidding. Because, <laughs> because um, you know, we got the machine so early, so not everybody's gonna gonna have their machines now. So th that's why that we don't have that thing yet. So how long does it take to get these? Uh, okay, so I'm getting seven in today, but I think that at this point those ones are all spoken for. But we're still getting machines, and we they, we, we put in for a lot of them, and they say that they're going to fill all the ones that we put in for. So it shouldn't be any problem getting machines. Um, I don't know for sure when my next shipment is, but um, I've already got, what, we got 11 so far? So we are getting them. <laughs> it's not, it's not uh, going to be a problem. All right, so I think that's, yeah, that's the last picture of these that I took. I just wanted to show you that because I don't have one to physically show you here. I wish I did. But that is going to be really, really awesome to uh, uh, to get that. So that's why you wanted to sign up. Anyway, let's go eat snacks. Okay. So there was, uh, there was something that I forgot to do before leaving, which was I was supposed to sew a letter onto this. So I'm going to do that real quick. And I'm going to use 
uh, this to show you um, something that you can do with the projector. If you have, if you have a design that is, doesn't have a bunch of colors in it, that's black, okay? The, um, a second. My camera person has abandoned me, so. So, so the way the projector works, if, if, you're, if you're having the projector show the color black, it just kind of shows no light, and that's how it does black. So if I use my projector to try and project something black, like this letter, onto the material, you don't see anything at all. So what they let you do is change the background color, and that is how you can see black things. Right? So I'm just going to go ahead and move my letter. Okay, so I'm moving where the projection is so that I can then move my letter into that area. And then when I let go of this, it's gonna, just going to show up on my, see how you can see it? How do you know it's in the center? Do you need this eyeball? Is there something to line it up with? Well, what I could do is use that, um, that crosshair to, to do my placement. I'm not going to do that just because... I am not really that worried about it because it's just a sample, but I already have I already have two perfect samples of this. So I'm moving it. All right, so so now that's I'm satisfied with where that is, but I just wanted to show you that you can change that background color um, for your projections. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and let this uh, sew this out, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get into the sewing parts uh, of this machine, some of the really neat things we can do for sewing. So while this is doing this, uh, something I forgot to mention is this excellent new treasure chest that we get with this, okay? Everybody that has an Alissimo, let's move this stuff out of the way here so you can see it. Is that showing up on here? My big head's in the way. All right. So those of you who have a Destiny or a, there we go, I'm just trying to get out of the way of the projector. <laughs> Um, those of you who have a Destiny or an Alissimo know the joy of opening your treasure chest where you can't tell whether or not it's locked or unlocked and you flip the little flippies one way and then you pick it up and it's not actually unlocked because you had it backwards and you flip it back the other way and it actually, it turns out that it was unlocked before, it was just at a slight angle. Anyway, you don't have to do that anymore because now we've got buttons. You just hit the buttons and it opens up, it's got a hinge. The lid is hinged. You don't you don't drop the lid on the ground. It's just right there. It closes. It opens. Really, really nice. Okay. It has more storage. There's more stuff to store. It has a spot for your for your three-in-one screwdriver. Look at this. It took me a while to figure out what this opening was for. I put all kinds of stuff in there, uh, and then I looked in the manual and was like, oh, it's that. <laughs> So, so that's neat. Uh, and then, of course, each these trays that come out, they fit in the sewing table. Uh, so the little piece that attaches when you don't have the embroidery unit on, they fit down in there, and you can use it like a, like a, a normal sewing machine would work. Anyway, so that is uh, what I wanted to show you. And it took up just the right amount of time because now my embroidery is finished. Hooray. And uh, so we're going to pop this out of here. And Kate is going to go cut this in just the right amount so that I can finish my project. But wait, I can't see you on the camera while you do that. Well, that's all right. All right, are we, can we see the screen? No, all right. of course she doesn't leave it with the. All right, I'm just kidding. See your own camera. I can, yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. It's a high shank, just like the just like the Destiny and the Unity. Um, I, I think pretty much going forward, they're probably always going to be that way. Um, and uh, speaking of uh, stuff that's like the Destiny, you do get the same walking foot, uh, which is the digital dual feed foot, uh, and uh, that works just the same way. It plugs into the back of the machine the same way. Still awesome, um, just like the old one. So you still get that. Uh, okay, so let's go into sewing mode and look at some of the neat things we can do for sewing. Now, this thing moves out of the way, and this is actually a big enough surface that this is really the first time, I think, that I would probably just sew with the embroidery unit on all the time, unless I needed to use the free arm. Um, 
even on the destiny where the arm stopped about here, um, it, it, you could do that. Uh, but here, I mean, I've got a lot of space. Okay. Um, speaking of space, we've, we've got 13 inches. I think I mentioned that already to the right of the needle from here to here. So that is, um, that is bigger than the destiny. Um, and we also have better lighting. Uh, there's more led lights in this, uh, than there were in the destiny. So that is cool too. Yes, a quarter inch on the letter side. All right, so uh, we also are going to need to change our shank because I've got the embroidery foot on there. So I'm going to use my handy three-in-one screwdriver, same one you get with the Destiny. And this is easier to take off now because I don't have to remember to unplug it out of the back. Yay. Put this in its home. Get, get in your home. All right, my assistant will um, put that back in its home properly. Uh, <laughs> what have you done? Just changing my shank. It's just wrong. It's just wrong. Not right. Okay. Not your shank, right? Huh? You're changing your foot, not your shank. Yeah, so I put the shank adapter on so that I can snap on all my snap on feet. And uh, so before I actually sew my project together, I want to show you some neat stuff on here. So here's just some, some rows of decorative stitching that we did. Um, and if I wanted to put some stitching next to these, I can use the projector just the same way that I could in the embroidery mode, where it will actually shine, show me right where my stitches are going to go. Okay, now I can do this either with this white background or I can do it with a blank background, which is actually the way that I prefer it. Let's see if you can see it very well uh, on, the, on the screen with a black background. I think it looks nicer. Uh, and let's do something with some width so we can actually see it. See that? Kind of stands out a little bit more if you do it with the black background, I think. So that's where my stitches are going to go. All right. Now, if I change my stitch settings, which I can do right on the screen or with another way that I'm going to show you in a second, but if I change my stitch settings, watch what that's doing to the width of my stitch. Okay. It changes it right on the fabric, just the same way that it does right on the screen. And if I, if I want to, I can use my new stylus to make these adjustments right on the fabric itself. I don't have to take my eyes off of the stitch. Sometimes when you're changing your stitch, it, the, the changes that it makes are so subtle that you're looking at your screen, you hit it, and then you look back, and you can't tell what's been changed. This allows me to... Right. Can you show it like, like, like turn? Oh, so that oh my hand's in the way? Oh, good shot of your I'm sorry. There we go. There you go. That's so that's him actually pressing the button. All right, so every time I hit the button, a little light goes off if you, if you can't see that. And that is what is telling it to change my stitch. That is pretty cool. So that's cool enough on a, uh, on a zigzag stitch, but let's go and look at some of the awesome character decorative stitches we have built into this thing. So I'm going to go in and pick, um, let's see. Oh, look at these. These have little sewing machines and stuff on them. Look at this. It's a little sewing machine. Uh, it repeats with a spool of thread. Show them on the, on the screen here. You can see more of the, the pattern going. Look at that. Isn't that a nice stitch? Okay, and this is actual size, right? So this is, this is the actual size of the stitch that's going to sew out. Um, this machine uses lateral feed. That's feed that moves the fabric left and right to create uh, as wide of a stitch as you want. Up to about 40 millimeters this thing can do. So it uses the, the, the feed dogs to move the fabric around to achieve that. Uh, and we've got lots of neat stuff. So how many people actually use the decorative stitches on your Alissimo or on your Destiny? A lot of you? Good. That's good. We point at the screen. Point at the screen. What? Please point at the screen. Oh, no, I, I thought you meant me. <laughs> so a big difference is when you're in your character decorative stitches here, you can select another decorative stitch without it adding it to the previous decorative stitch. Okay, how many times has that happened to you? You go in, you go in, and you, oh, you know what? This isn't the one I wanted. You touch another one, and then instead of just repeating that one, it just adds it to the last one. 
I have always hated that. I do it in every single demo that I do because I forget that it does that. Uh, and I'm sure that it must be frustrating if, uh, if you're at home. So it no longer defaults to that. Now, I can certainly still do that. I can do the stitch building. There's a mode, like I just go right up into this corner here and I can hit whether I want it to be uh, a single pattern or whether I want it to be repeating the same pattern. That works exactly the same way. I can still mirror image my stitches, all that groovy stuff. But it doesn't automatically <laughs> go and repeat them, which, like I said, drives me up the wall. Okay, so here we can see I've got a stitch that's really wide um, on, on my fabric. Um, and maybe I want to go and look at what different stitches might look like next to these stitches that are already on the page. Now, I can go over on my screen and look at them, but the icons are very small and they don't give me the full context for whether it's a really big decorative design or where it's a, whether it's a really small one. So if I use my stylus with my left hand and I hit this icon here, this allows me to page through my decorative stitches one at a time. And I can really get a feel for the scale of these things. The icon for this butterfly is exactly the same size as the icon for a zigzag stitch, okay? And they're vastly different. So this way, you'll find some decorative stitches that you may not have even ever considered just looking at them on the screen because you actually see what they look like sewn out. You can tell that these are those extra wide stitches and see how good they will look uh, on the, the item that you're, that you're doing. So that is really cool. I am a big fan of being able to switch through these. And then when I find one that I like, I can just hit set. And I've got little letters, <laughs> little envelopes. And then I can adjust the settings of them uh, as before. So that is super, super neat. So the other thing that we can do um, with this projector in the sewing mode is I'm going to switch the projector off and go to the guideline. Now, those of us with unities and with destinies and with crescendos have had the ability to project a single line in front of your needle and then move it around uh, for quite a long time. But we have a new thing we can do. This is the guideline, all right? So I've still got a red line. Let me put my foot down so we can see it a little bit better. I've still got a red line, and that's lined up with my needle. But now I have a green line over here. Now I can change the color of that green line. So if I'm sewing on green fabric, it, you know, I don't have to <laughs> have a green line that I can't see. But what this is, is this is me setting my seam allowance. So they call this main line and subline. So if I go over to the subline, I have, uh, I have the ability to set my subline distance as much as I want. So on my screen, I've now, on my screen, I've now set this to a quarter inch. So we've got a quarter inch between the green line and the red line. And I can change that at will. I can make it whatever, whatever distance I want. So if I'm, if I'm trying to use my, my line as a quarter inch guide, I still get the line in front of my needle, which is really, really awesome. Not just that, though. I can also... There's more. There is more. That's right. I can also project an entire grid onto my fabric. Look at that. Isn't that neat? So right now it's a five millimeter grid. I'm going to go ahead and increase this. So uh, I'm going to pass a quarter inch. I'm going to make this a half inch grid. That's it. That's a half inch. And if you look, we've, uh, we've been using the half inch grid to line up these decorative stitches. Okay, see how that f fits perfectly in the center of those? So if I wanted to continue this, I would put my line in the center, put my foot down here, and pick a decorative stitch, and sew along. I don't want to mess up my... I should have I made up a new one of these to, <laughs> to do, but I'm, I'm going to do this in a minute. That's what this, that's what this guy's for. Brad, what's yeah. It's actually Floriani, um, and a lot of the decorative stitches look thicker <laughs> because they repeat over themselves like a bean stitch does to make it look bolder. Um, so that's why those stitches look so thick. And uh, so, so there's my grid, but there's more. <laughs> I can also change this from a grid to an angle. So right now it's tough to see because the red is a little difficult to see on this fabric. 
but this is a 90 degree angle. And now it's a 60 degree angle. And now my seam allowance is a quarter inch. I can set it to whatever I want. Oops, wrong way. 45 degree angle. Really, really cool. So I can line up like a corner on there. It's just really neat. So that's pretty awesome. All right, so I'm going to go and do a little bit of sewing for real now. Uh, let's see. I think that the next thing that I do is sew in my ribbon for my project. Am I right about that? Is the ribbon next? I believe so. Okay. I'll blame you if I'll blame you if it's wrong. I don't know. I just work here. Oh, you. <laughs> I'm going to pretend. Not quite, not quite. All right, so I'm just going to sew this ribbon on. Wait. What? It should be on the other, other side. I don't think so. Yeah. Yeah. She's showing you on that. Hmm. Button hole goes there. <laughs> you have passed my first test. <laughs> All right, so we're going to put this on here. Uh, there we go. I'm going to turn off that um, angle line. And let's just use the, the line. I don't think this has to be in a particular spot, but I'm going to set it. I've got it at um, what a quarter inch right now, so we'll leave it at that and go ahead and sew my thing. Oh, you still do, by the way, have the. Um... Oh, this needs to be a straight stitch. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm switching to a straight stitch now. But you do have the option still of putting your camera on. You're going to have to show the screen again. So if I like doing this, which I could do on the Destiny, where it shows me a live action view of, of what's in there, I can still do that. And they fixed the weird little distortion that, that was there on the Destiny, which was there since day one and they never fixed. And I was always like, why does this do this? The, the answer of why it does it is because the fisheye lens on the, uh, on the camera caused it. But they have a much, uh, much better camera now, so that doesn't happen. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and hit this. Yeah, it's super quiet. So the regular sewing is quieter too. They actually have a different feed motor in there. Um, so that's made it a little quieter. All right, so there's that. And then I'm also going to sew, there's a pocket involved in this project. And we're going to use the, um, oh, this is what I should have been doing my, my demonstration of the grid on. <laughs> that's, that's all right. We're going to sew a pretty decorative stitch onto here, OK? Um, this is probably the wrong color thread to do it because it's like the same color as my fabric. So I'm going to change. Oh, you see? You see what I'm about to do? Don't do that. <laughs> I really, I really want to do it. I really want to do it. Don't do that. Don't do what I just did ever. <laughs> I can't help myself. All right. Here we go. Thank you. It's all right. I pull all kinds of thread out of the um, check springs for you guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, I'll probably be done in. I mean, I could be done in five minutes if I just like speed through it. Probably till four. Like officially, I think it was supposed to be till four. So I mean, we could do, you know, till four. I mean, if you're already sold on it. Well, it said, yeah, it said 130 to 3.30 on the email that I sent because that's what I thought it was. But then it was written down in the book and everybody was telling everybody something else. So. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to turn my grid on here. I'm going to set, if, I've already got it set to a half an inch. Uh, so let's see, we'll do about an inch inside. I'm going to line up to this grid line and I'm going to pick a pretty decorative stitch.
And I'm just going to use this to keep my... Uh, fabric squared up. You can also sew with the projector turned on, which is actually, I prefer to do it that way. So I see where my stitches are in front rather than looking at the, at the grid if I'm doing a decorative stitch because the projection doesn't move. Should have done because I did that kind of crooked. All right, so that is way straighter than I could have done on my own. And so, all right, well now we're going to sew in the pocket, uh, and I'm going to do that. Uh, let's see. Good side to good side against the ribbon. That's right. That's exactly as I taught you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so uh, let's see. This is supposed to be, if I remember correctly, a half inch. Quarter inch. No, it's a half inch. So I'm using my grid again. And then I need my backing, right? And this goes right side to right side, right? And you want it lined up with the letter. Wait, where's your pocket? Huh? Lined up the other way. Oh, lined up this way. I only sew on this side. But I got to go across too, right? Yes. Here, let's do this. Sorry, I'm just not a sewer, you know? <laughs> yeah, you should start from the bottom. Wait, huh? No, no. Yep, nope. Turn it one more start over here. What, this way? No, yes. yep, no, nope. like that. There you go. You should start from the bottom up. You guys all passed the <laughs> test. <laughs> Good job. Yeah, I could do that. <laughs> ah. Yeah, you know, I, I, you're absolutely right. I could have done this entire thing in IQ Designer, but I wanted to, to show you the sewing stuff on it. But yeah, you know, if I was doing this on my own, I would absolutely have done that. And then I do it as an IQ designer class where everything happens um, in the hoop. I'm not paying attention and I sewed it crooked. Not yet, we'll talk to Charlie. Yes, talk to Charlie. <laughs> So I'm just kind of like rotating it and seeing how much farther I need to go. Too far. All right, in the interest of just being done. I'm not a sewer, clearly. Stop laughing at me, Kate. It's fine. Oh, jeez. The one that I did yesterday I did a lot better on the sewing part. <laughs> all right, anyway, so that's all the sewing, right? We just turn it inside out? Right side in? Should be. All right, so check it out. 
you have to cut your corners. Oh yeah, I do got to do my buttonhole. You're right. No, the buttonhole's later. Yeah, stop confusing me, Jenny. Do what? See what you want to do, Brad, is you want to clip these corners so that when you turn it. So what you want to do is you want to cut the corners. <laughs> I don't know. I don't do sewing. <laughs> All right, so let's turn this inside out here. All right, flip this thing out here. All right, so the last thing we have to do once I get this flipped the right way is, um, is put in a buttonhole to put our ribbon through and tie a little pretty bow. I did myself earlier. I'm just kidding. <laughs> you want to get out the buttonhole and turn it for you? Yeah, here. My assistant is. Uh... <laughs> All right, so the buttonholer is new and different um, and improved because on the old buttonholer, we had to put our button that we're making the buttonhole for in the back of the foot. So you had to put it on and like kind of, well, you could do it while it was off, but if you didn't, you had to like reach around back here and stuff's in your way. This one, the, the opening is in the front and it opens quite a bit wider than the old one. So I can make larger buttonholes than I could before. And instead of using a little mechanical arm that you have to remember to bring down and then you hit the gas and the thing says, put down your buttonhole lever. It doesn't do that anymore. It actually uses the camera to figure out how far this is open. Uh, so that's one of the reasons it's able to open wider is because there was a mechanical, an actual mechanical limitation on the old buttonhole foot where it could not go any further because there's only this much space in the top of the machine. Anyway, we're not gonna actually be sewing in a button. We need to make this wide enough to fit on that piece of ribbon that I sewed in. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab that ribbon. I'm gonna use this piece over here though because it's the same stuff. I had a whole backup kit in case I ruined anything. <laughs> so I'm taking my ribbon. Well, just imagine me closing the, this thing onto the ribbon. So now this is exactly the width of my ribbon. And I am going to put this buttonholer on. And it comes with this thing. What is this thing? This is a buttonhole stabilizer. So if you've got something that's a lot of layers, like this and you want to put a buttonhole on something, you put it between these two pieces. Can you see what I'm doing there? Nom, 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 nom. Now, if you're just sewing, if you're just doing it on a piece of cotton, you don't need to use the stabilizer. Okay, it works just fine without it. Um, it's only if you need it that you use it, and we are gonna need it. It is not able to do this thick an object without it. Now this just snaps in. Like that. Where's my... Where'd she go? I'll just edit this part out of the video that I put on YouTube. Probably not, though. I'll just leave it in. But, um, but anyway, so... This basically works in practice the same way that the old one did. You put the button in, you put the, the, uh, the little crosshair at the spot where you want the buttonhole to start. Remember, that's the, that's the end of the buttonhole that's closest to you. That's where that's going to go. Um, and uh, you just hit start, and it just does it. Where did she go? I sewed it perfectly. That's why you had to go and re-sew it? Yeah. It's fine. Hold on, let me... I actually did the same thing yesterday on my other one. I had to do it twice. The corners? It wasn't the corner. It was... There. See I'm that. not a sewer. Can you change the style of that now? Yeah, you can. So if we, uh, if we could see the screen... <laughs> I don't even... <laughs> Uh, so we have a bunch of different styles of buttonholes to choose from. Uh, we've got like our square, our round end, our keyhole. We have, we can even do a four step buttonhole uh, on this. If you need one that's even bigger than the maximum size of the, um, the automatic buttonholer foot, you can do a four step buttonhole and you can do it as big as you want. I mean, it could be, 
It could be 12 inches long, you know, I mean, the biggest buttonholes you've ever seen. Um, but we're going to do just a regular square one for now. So I feed this into here. And I'm going to line it up somewhere in the front ish. The projector does not project with the buttonhole foot, but you can you can mark exactly where you want the beginning of it to be, exactly. It does not. It starts at the end. The end that is closest to you is where, is where it's going to start. All right, so I've got that down. I've got that. Oh, um, one thing I just want to point out. Um, this is less of a demonstrator and uh, more of a technical tip. Zoom out a little tiny bit, please. You see the start button? It's green, right? Now it's red. OK, you know why? So it's the camera. The camera is what works with this. So you don't want to stick your face down here while it's doing this, because it's going to mess up the buttonhole. Should we ask you how you know? They showed me in class. Okay. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the old gas pedal here. Now it speeds up and slows down, because it's checking the position of those little dots. Okay, I'm not making it do this. It's doing this on its own. Oh well, no! I could be hit. I could have hit the start button. I just, I didn't, I didn't unplug my foot control first. It is a really nice buttonhole. It's a little crooked because I placed it, but yeah, lovely. So then we've got our little, our little pocket with our pretty decorative sewing stitch. You see that? How lovely that is. Yeah. Oh man. Yep. With our letter M for Meadow. Obviously, I'll take this one home for her. She'll have the one with the crooked buttonhole. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so you just cut your ribbon and tie a little bow through the buttonhole and that's that's it. So that's what I wanted to, to do just kind of as the demonstration <laughs> of the different features. So so there we go. Um, now we're done. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Yeah. I'm being funny. Okay. Uh, with this being way more than what the destiny to is, when we go to the place, somebody's going to be outside to, to unload the so the question is, um, with this machine being heavier than the Destiny 2, will we come out and get it from the car for you? Absolutely. We do that with the Destiny 2. All you got to do is come in, and we'll come out and get it. And we'll do the same with this one. Absolutely. Yes? How much is the pallet software? Pallet software is $19.99. Okay. $19.99. $1,999.95. <laughs> Smarty pants. <laughs> John? Yes. Turn it into an applique. Yeah. So the question is, can we can we create an applique out of something that we scan? Um, and yes, the answer is yes. Um, basically, what you do is you kind of think about it in layers, and you capture each layer and 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 set it in the embroidery machine. And then once you have all the layers, then you could save it all as one design. Um, and I could show you how that would work pretty easily. I don't need a foot on there at all for this. All right, I'm going to go into my IQ designer. Um, rather than scan something, I'm going to do it with a picture that I, that I have on a USB drive just because it's faster. Uh, ba, 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 ba. What am I doing? This. And I'm going to bring in a line design. Oh, where's my USB drive? Somebody took it. 
Oh. Get in there. Look at my drive. All right, so. Oh, man. I don't have any good line images on this drive. I had some really, I actually had some really good ones on a different drive. All right, we'll scan. We've got this lady here. How large is the scan frame? Uh, it's this big. It is. It's it's exactly the same size as the Destiny. Yeah, it's it's no difference. Than, I don't know what its actual dimensions are, but yeah, it's the same one that the Destiny came with. Uh, all right, so all right, we're going to bring in our image by scanning. So image scan, and oh, here no, let's bring it in as a line design, and we're going to do scan. Just testing Kate, make sure she knew what button to hit. All right, so now you can see it. Go ahead and, and scan the, the frame. Right now, what it's doing is recognizing the difference in light between the white and the black side. Notice how it's starting kind of in the middle here. If you uh, had a destiny, you would know that it starts way further left of that because this machine has a wider angle camera it is able to do this in fewer passes. That's why it's faster. It's not that the machine moves it any faster, it's that it doesn't have to make as many passes when it's doing a scan. It decided it wanted to scan over there. All right, so now it's done. So of course we go and crop out our magnets. This um, the camera is a little bit better to at resolving fine detail. I have found. Okay. So here's what we're gonna do. Now I'm gonna do this. This is gonna be a, a little more complex than I would probably do in a normal demonstration, but if you want to see how I would go about making kind of a layered applique design, uh, I'm going to show you. So here's how we can do more complex things than just a single one set of lines at a time. And I'm going to use my, my fancy new sensor pen, and I'm also doing this off the top of my head. This is entirely theoretical the way that I'm imagining this working, but I'm pretty sure that I'm right that this will work like this. All right, so first thing I need to do is save this image, okay? Because I need to come back to this again and again, and everything needs to be in exactly the same place every single time. All right, so first thing, I'm gonna hit memory and put it in my machine, okay? So now I can come back to this image as many times as I want. I'm also going to make it so that I can't see the picture of the magnets in the background because they would distract me, all right? Now, when I look at this, I want to think about what the first layer is going to be, the first bit of applique that I need, right? So if we look at the way this design is, it seems to me that her neck here is underneath of both the face and the, uh, the, the outside of her jacket, okay? So this is going to be the first element that I'm going to digitize, right? So to do that, I'm going to use my eraser and I'm going to erase everything that's not that part, okay? Now, again, this is, I could just fill these things with color and they would work, or I could convert everything to an applique and do it all as one piece. That'd be stupid, though. This is um, a little more complicated than, like I, like I said, I would probably show normally. And also, I've never done it before. But I'm pretty sure that I know how to do it. So this makes it really, really easy to erase things, having this, like the, the tip of this even feels kind of like you're physically erasing things. Having this, this touch screen that's a much more sensitive touch screen, doing that pass that I did right there, that would be really annoying in the other, uh, in the, either the Elissimo or the Destiny. Plus, oh, check this out. You know the whole pinch to zoom thing? Oh. Pretty slick. And we have a pan button now. Instead of having to go and use the small picture of it and move around, we can just pan around like this, which at first I didn't like that, and now I really do. I like it a lot. 
Oops, wrong side of the stylus. No, oh, I gotta get add a pan. And of course we can undo anything that we get too close on like that right there. I, I kind of did that on purpose. I can just undo it and then I'm back in business. But basically I just need to get just that piece. I'm going to zoom out a little bit. I kind of zoomed in more than I meant to when I did that pinch. My pinch was a little... You can, yeah. So here's my eraser. I've got it set on size 38. This is what size 75-ish looks like, right? So it's big. I don't know if my hand's probably in the way. All right, so I go in here and I cut these off until they're dead perfect. Um, you know, if I want, I could go in and zoom in all the way, pan down to every tiny imperfection like that and erase it. Oops. Probably don't want my eraser to be 19 miles long while I'm doing this, but. All right, so anyway, so here's my first element, right? Okay, so we're gonna go and zoom out. And, hmm. All right, so I'm thinking about this, and I'm thinking that the way that this is, remember, This image here, it has this outer part of her coat and it has her face. And those are on top of this, right? So this doesn't need a top stitch. The top stitch is going to be created by this, if I want it to. Okay? But so I have the option here. I can have a top stitch there or I could not have a top stitch there. It's up to me. Just depends on how I feel as the designer. Let's say that I don't want to have a top stitch. We're going to let the coat so that it overlaps her skin, and her skin's not overlapping the coat. That would be the, the top stitch color. So anyway, sorry, I'm going to take this, and I'm going to hit next. So what do we need out of this to make it an applique? Straight stitch. We need a straight stitch? Zigzag. Well, we don't need the zigzag because we're not doing a top stitch. So we need a straight stitch and a straight stitch. We need two of them so, so that we can cut out the, the fabric the second time. Now, if we had pieces that were already cut out the right size, then we wouldn't need two straight stitches. But we're going to do a traditional applique where it sews out the placement first, and then it sews out the tack down stitch, and then we trim around it. That's true. If yeah, we could just use the projector to figure out where it is. You're right. Okay, no placement stitch it is. <laughs> so we'll have just a run stitch. You're right. I was thinking. I was thinking of the past. Just a run stitch. We're tacking it down. Yeah, exactly. We're, well, we're using the projector. <laughs> so so the, the thing that was pointed out was that we don't need the placement stitch because I have a projector, and she's absolutely right. All right, so... Uh, your projector, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, your projector's only so big, so if you had something that was bigger, that might be difficult to place. Well, but you can move your view of what you're looking at all around, so you can see all around the edge of anything you want to look at. So you would, you would be able to do it. Okay. All right, so I'm going to just take this, and I'm going to save it to the memory. Did I already do that? No. Okay, good. And I'm not going to set it because I'm just I'm going to do that last. I'm probably not going to do this entire thing, guys. This would take quite a while. Um, but so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to all clear this, and I'm going to load my original outline. Now, I didn't move anything from my original outline. Oh, I did need to set that, didn't I? I needed to, to export that line. You can export it later. Yeah, I can. can. I definitely can. All right. so. Now I need to decide the next part that I'm going to do. So this time, I'm actually going to do the outer part of her jacket there. And again, I go in and erase almost everything. I do need this part gone. Oh, it's not perfect, but why am I not zooming in? Well, that would make it easier if I made a smaller eraser. All 
All right, now let's say I want a satin stitch for my top stitch for this. Oh, I was still in pan, wasn't I? Yeah, I am. I want to zoom. Zoom. Oh, I was I was pinching the wrong way. All right, so now for this one, what do I need? I need a straight stitch and a zigzag. Exactly. So first thing we do, we hit next. We have this as a zigzag. We want to make sure that every color is different, so the machine stops between them all. So we've got a zigzag. We're going to change that to a run stitch just so we can do everything in order. Blah, 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 right? So we take this and we're going to put that in the memory. And realistically, we should have hit set on the other one. I just made the. All right, here, just. I'm going to go ahead and. There was a step that I that I skipped before. So I'm going to go ahead and do that so that I can build my, my applique. Um, I need to go and load. No, 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 I'm not starting all over. But I should have, when I did the last one, I should have hit set so that I had it. And then I can add the next one. Right, so now we've got our outer part, and this is the run. We'll set that. OK, right, so that's part two. And then we go in and we add. Now we need the satin stitch. Oops, wrong button. Hit IQ. And then load from our memory. And this time we tell it to make this a satin stitch. We set, oh, I need to change the color though, right? So it stops between them. Doesn't matter what the color is, we just got to change it. And we could set our, uh, our stitch width and all that. Okay, so that's part two. So you see where I'm going with this? We go in and we build it as if we're thinking of what step goes where. Um, so that's, like I said, that's kind of more complex than I would probably get into in a normal demonstration. Um, you guys are obviously the hardcore. Uh, you're still here, so. <laughs> Um, uh, anyway, John, does that answer your question? All right, good. What else we got? Nothing? Is it? Yeah, what's up? The um, thread holding the thread. Yes. Um, I like that device. Can that be bought separately? Um, I'm sure that eventually you'd be able to buy it separately. So the question is, like yeah. A replacement part, like yeah. Exactly. So the question is, can you buy this thread stand thing separately? Uh, I, I'm sure they don't have any right now because the machine's so new. Eventually, you probably will be able to because people will break them and you know they'll even, drop them on the ground. Even if it, you can't use it necessarily on that flap like on yeah. other machines. It's still the case and everything is much better to protect it from breaking. It is cool, yeah. But the not having a platform to put it on would be difficult if you had a different machine. No, I Yeah, it's awesome. I love that. The the thread stand is great. Yeah. The thread stand that oh. multiple colors, you know, multiple, uh, like 12. Yeah, or it does not come that. with it. The okay. one from the Destiny does fit it. OK. okay. So the question was, can you use uh, the, the 10 spool thread stand? And the answer is, yes, you can. You do have to take the lid off. The lid comes off the same way that the old one did. Um, but if you wanted to use, at least at the moment, the only way to do that is to Take the entire lid off. Yeah. Yeah, it is. So the package, just to be clear, uh, the package right now is the machine, is pallet 11, it's the trolley bag, the purple trolley bag that, that we showed you earlier, and a two year Love of Knowledge membership. Okay, Love of Knowledge is the Baby Lock education program where you can go on the internet and watch their tutorial videos that they make. Not just the tutorial videos on this machine, they've got over 400 videos 
You can watch them uh, on every machine that they make or have ever made, essentially. They even have machines that are just no longer made. Software, uh, and then they have videos for every single one of the feet that they make. They teach you how to use them and everything. It's really, really a great resource. Of course, you also get from us five years free service, unlimited one-on-one -on -one instruction, lifetime 10% discount. I think most of you already have that. But you get the, the one year of the 25% off discount for the Platinum Preferred Customer Plan. Uh, and I don't have one of those cards to show you because the printers, apparently their rounded edge cutter broke. And I thought I'd be cute and order like some fancy rounded edge cards. And that's why I don't have those to show you. But <laughs> they'll have your name on them in there. Yeah, so the, it's only through September 30th that, that you're getting the pallet, that you're getting the trolley, uh, and that you're getting the two-year love of knowledge. After that, it's not coming with that stuff anymore. And the PC laptop. Yeah, yeah, well, it doesn't come with the PC laptop, but you have to provide your own one of those. Oh, okay, so uh, the machine is $19,999. That's, that's the price for it, so... Uh, 19,999. Um, if you have uh, a Destiny or Lissimo in trade uh, to trade in, I have a I have a fixed set of what each one of those is worth depending on what it is, how many upgrades it has, how old it is, etc. Um, so just ask me what your trade in will be, uh, and I can tell you. Um, the uh, the average person's uh, monthly payments thus far that I have seen have been around $220 a month with trade. That's five years, 60, 60 months, yeah. No, I can only take one at a time. Real quick question. Yeah. On the um, love of knowledge, do they have Solaris video drive? I know that they have the different feats. I haven't looked. I know that they filmed them. Um, I would be surprised if they weren't already up. There's one. There's only one up there. Introducing the Solaris. Yeah. Well, they talked a lot at Tech about how they're actually rolling out a large video initiative in the next like six months or so. Yeah. That's going to be both publicly available, but also in the library for right. love of knowledge. So, so yeah, they're they're filming and getting. Things. Yeah, they're, they're, I know that they've already filmed a lot of the um, the tutorials for those. Uh, they they're I guess they're just editing them and putting them together to put onto that page. But um, I talked to some of the people that are in the videos, and they're like, oh yeah, we've been doing nothing but Solaris videos. So. Sure, there'll be plenty. <laughs> Plus, I'm recording this. I'm going to put this on YouTube. So, <laughs> you'll be able to watch this anytime you want. Me failing to sew this thing straight. Um, all right. Anything else? Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much. All right.